So here we are, playing Paths of Glory. First time Patrick and I have ever played this game against each other with the new 5th edition version. And we've just finished the uh, first round, uh, August 1914. And Patrick, what's the state of play? I'm playing the Central Powers. And... Okay, so um, there's a very, very heavy uh, and committed attack by the Germans on the Western Front. That's where we've seen most of the action. And they've uh, played Guns of August and, and managed to push through... Um, and uh, severely wound the, the uh, French army. And we've seen a little bit of action on the Eastern Front with um, some Russian attacks along the Austrian border. Um, the thing that's saving the Allies right now on the Western Front is the fact that the uh, Germans have yet to play Race to the Sea, which stops them entering these three spaces. Uh, so we're about to start September 1914, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yes, so that's it. So uh, this certainly is bringing back memories. Last time I played this was over a decade ago. Okay, so we've just finished uh, September 1914, and we've moved into the fall of 1914, and the Allied powers, Patrick, have moved into limited war, and I'm unfortunately still at mobilisation. Okay, uh, Patrick, do you want to do a quick rundown of what happened in uh, uh, Yep, so the Western Front was a lot quieter this um season, but um, still, there's still a few battles. The, the British have now come in in force. They've got two strong armies, which is certainly helping anchor the, the front on that side. Still been pretty some um, consistent attacks on, from the Russians on the Austrian front, and been a bit of a sally out with the Germans. Um, other than that, it's been a term where we've played some reinforcements and, and some replacements. So, yep, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, so this is the situation at the end of the fall turn, 1914, beginning of winter, 1915. And um, Patrick, give us a rundown of where we're at. Okay, so on the Western Front, there's been some major German attacks, which have severely attrition the, the French and British armies. Um, but the Germans haven't uh, pushed forward to the front of the line to, to, to apply that strategic pressure. So a bit of breathing space, but still... Uh, I, was just, I was just saying to Patrick that um, I, I sort of had him in disarray there along the front, but due to my lack of experience with the game, I didn't push ahead enough because I was concerned about my supply lines. But I think a more experienced player would have probably been threatening Paris by now. Uh, on the Eastern Front, there have just been a few more minor attacks from the Serbs and the, um, the Russians. Uh, and nothing really that much has happened, although... One thing that has happened is that uh, the uh, Allies have managed to play a huge number of reinforcements this turn, which have led them to be able to rebuild the French and British forces quite significantly. And um, the Allies... Oh, and the Germans are... Uh, so the Central Powers are finally at um, limited war. So that's the situation, and um, back shortly. OK, it's the uh, beginning of spring 1914. Sorry, 1915. And this is the situation... You want to give us a quick rundown, Patrick, how that last turn went? Okay, so on the Western Front, we have, um, there was a French attack and a German counterattack. Again, they've been driven away from the front line, so there hasn't been, hasn't been too bloody there. On the Eastern Front, it's been far more bloody, with a um, strong Russian uh, army, three armies coming up against the Austrians and driving them right back. Uh, and also the Serbian army pushing the uh, the Austrians back. The Austrians have taken a huge number of casualties and uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, that's about it. Really. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, no, uh, no action down No action in the Near East. And uh, that's it. So um, Patrick managed to drag uh, my attention away from the Western Front. Um, with some pushes there which um, have uh, hurt the Austro-Hungarians badly and stalled my uh, progress here. So let's see if I can swing it around next turn. This is the beginning of summer 1915 and um, let's take a look at the map. So on the Western Front, what's going on Patrick? On the Western Front, uh, the Allied line has solidified somewhat. Um, there hasn't really been that many. There's been one attack, but other than that, there hasn't really been much. So there's very strong British force here. Slightly weaker French force here, but importantly, the first trench has been built. 
Um, and the gym has taken quite a few losses, but they've um, had a stack of replacements this turn, so they've rebuilt their army up back to full. Um, on the eastern front, it's been a little bit quieter, although uh, the Russians have made a little bit of progress. Um, take, trying to take some, take some forts. And you're besieging um, and Connorsburg and, and one other. That's one, right, yeah. yep. Konigsberg has been taken. And the Bulgarians have, um, have joined the war and entered the war on the central power side. The Serbians that um, got a bit angsty early on have been sort of uh, tamed a bit with a few losses. <laughs> That's right, yes. And in the Near East, nothing's happened there at all. It's been uh, quiet. And even the Austro-Hungarians seem to have recovered somewhat from the... Uh, Heavy losses they took earlier on in the game. Yeah, managed to get some reinforcements on the uh, table at Vienna and so forth. So that's the situation there. And in terms of the uh, war status, where are we at here? So CP war status is at 7, Allied war status is at 8. And of course, to get to total war, you have to get to 11. And the victory points is on 10, so she's 10. pretty even, isn't it? Pretty even, yeah. And um, thoughts on the game, having played it again for, uh, after many years, Patrick? Um, yeah, it seems to, the rules have seemed to come back into my head surprisingly easy, easier than I expected. Um, Has the game stood? Surprised I was able to just get straight back into it really without having a reread of the rules. And has the game stood the test of time? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's a great game. It um, really uh, evokes that sense of balancing fronts and attrition and, yeah. Okay, so that's, um, we've been playing for uh, three, four hours, I think, and we've managed to get to turn six, and we'll be leaving it here, so hopefully we can get back to it and finish it at some stage. This is the situation at the beginning of fall 1915, and it's been a, uh, a hectic time on the Western Front, but just before Patrick covers that, just to look at the uh, records track, the... Allied war status is at 8 and the CP war status is at 7, so pretty close there. And um, no other movement on the uh, commitment track or the capitulation track. Um, so yeah, Patrick, tell us what's going on in the uh, battlefront. Okay, so there's been a lot of action over here on the Western Front. Um, the, there's been a bit of to and fro here with a, a German attack into Ostend, which was then counter-attacked by the British. And the British have been um, attacking quite strongly on the west of the Western Front, uh, whereas the Germans have been attacking here towards the east of the of Western Front. They've managed to take another fort, the Fort of Verdun, I think it is. Or oh, Nossi, sorry. Um, and again, the French are really, really um, suffering in terms of losses. Um, so in French language, how are the French feeling at the moment? Uh, un peu uh, battu. <laughs> um, in the east, it's been a bit quieter actually. Um, there hasn't been much action except for a German army being eliminated here. Um, but you've taken a fort up in the Königsberg? Oh, yes, so that's right. The Königsberg has fallen and so has the, the fort of uh, Prismist. So um, the Russians seem to be quite dominant in this area. Uh, and we've this turn seen the uh, arrival of the Caucasus Near East Russian Army to put a bit of pressure on the, uh, on the Turkish. Uh, the other thing to be said is that the, um, the Central Powers played a huge number of replacements this turn and um, the German armies on the Western Front seem to be quite nicely replenished. Um, yeah, they seem to be getting the better of the replacement war, I guess would be the way to put it. Okay, so that's the uh, end of uh, turn six, beginning of turn seven. Back short. Okay, we're at the beginning of winter 1916, and uh, the um, Allies have made some significant gains, getting uh, down to five victory points. And um, they're one off total war, and I'm uh, at eight, so three off total war. Looking at the map, Patrick, where are we at? Okay, uh, well on the Western Front, it's again been very, very bloody for the, for the British this time, who took severe losses. The French, safe behind their trenches, were, were pretty much okay. Uh, the Italians have entered the war, and uh, haven't done very much, but um, 
decided to see some reinforcements drawn out to that side. Um, on the eastern front, the Russians are steamrolling, uh, pushing right through here, um, pushing back, uh, taking two, now taking Danzig this year, after having taken Königsberg last year, uh, netting quite a few points. And the other dramatic event was this. At the end of the year, the, um, the Russians managed to cut off all the Turkish units um, east of this, uh, this line here, uh, netting Mosul and Baghdad for some more VPs. Um, that's about it, really. So as the CP player, I'm feeling under pressure. Okay, back it's the beginning of the turn 9, spring of 1915. And things are looking a bit dire for me, the central powers. Um, the victory level is down to four. Four off from an allied victory. Essentially, Patrick has cleaned me up in the Near East and I just haven't responded to his uh, actions there. And all the route started when you got that army there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it did, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the, these two... Um, uh, call were cut off when I took Aleppo at the end of the turn. Um, so that's two more VPs. Uh, other than that, it stayed pretty static on both fronts, really. Not that much. Oh, sorry, the Germans have managed to take back Danzig and Königsberg, so they had a bit of a counter attack in Prussia. Um, other than that, it's um, just been a bit of uh, attrition fighting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the uh, situation now, beginning at turn nine. Okay, it's the end of the ninth turn, and the uh, Central Powers, myself, have capitulated. I, I'm sorry to say, uh, looking at the track, the um, Allies are on three, so pretty close to a victory on the track. But there were some quite significant developments in, the, uh, in this round. As you know from the previous round uh, in the Near East, um, the Allies had the Central Powers on the ropes completely. And... Uh, then an opportunity arose for the um, Austro-Hungarians to um, make some uh, inroads into Italy. Do you want to explain what happened there, Patrick? Yeah, so there's just a weak Italian force in Udine, uh, which the, um, the Austro-Hungarians beat, forcing them to retreat two spaces. And they stupidly retreated from there, from Udine to Venice to Bologna, allowing the, um, the Austrians to take Venice and cutting off this third and fourth Italian army. There was only an Italian army and one corps here. Um, so uh, Italy was facing um, destruction of two of its armies um, with no real prospects for any relief from any other side. Um, and so there were two strong Austrian ar um, armies here. They, they reduced the Italian army even further and on the following turn, they decide to capitalize on their gains and um, rush through with no core support from any other direction. Moved down to Viterbo, taking Florence, and the other one went to Milan, uh, leaving a, a huge gap where a Italian uh, core came back, took Venice, thereby putting both of them out of supply and re um, putting the uh, two Italian armies out of supply, which is it completely flipped the game. I, um, um, I just totally missed uh, the connection here and brought the, uh, the Austro-Hungarians up here. And then when I saw it, it was like, that's it. <laughs> the war is lost. And um, I mean, if it was that, uh, I mean, that, that was pretty much the bal potential balancing factor. But um, on all other fronts, it was looking pretty sad, even on the Western front. The Allies had started making quite a significant comeback with um, German attrition starting to tell. No core in their reserve, and we, the Allies actually did manage to destroy a German army permanently due to not, there not being any reserves. Um, so, yeah, it was looking pretty, pretty dire for the Central Powers, as can be um, noticed with the, the victory point situation as well. So, it lives up to his reputation as a brutal game if you make an error. It can um, one era in the supply line can just destroy you, as was um, exampled here. So that's um, paths of glory after uh, what uh, since two thousand and two since I last played it.
And Patrick, uh, when did you last play it? Uh, oh, maybe 2012, 2011, something time around And there. thoughts on the game again? Uh, surprisingly easy to remember the rules and to, um, I thought, you know, I mean, look at the rule book. It's, you know, it's pretty daunting, and yet, actually, it was not that hard to get back into it. And actually, this, this player aid right here, I've got to say, whoever came up with this, it's a real um, comfort for your mind. And it just lists all the exceptions in one place. And I think with this, arm um, with this, um, the, the rules actually become very, very straightforward. Okay, so um, as a um, the victory uh, meeting where I uh, surrender, I give um, <laughs> give Patrick his uh, his prize, a copy of um, Yardmaster Express for his um, great victory in Europe. Thank you. But we um, will meet again. Very, very gracious <laughs> enemy. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll treat you well.